Hey guys, Gaiden here. So I'd like to announce my first episode for my new Let's Play for Skyrim. This will be a modded Let's Play. A lot of the core game has been enhanced, so there's a lot of additions such as hunting, um, improved AI, improved combat systems. Basically, everything's been changed around to make Skyrim feel like a more immersive, but tougher game at the same time. So, without any further ado, let's start. So, for this character creation section, I'm basically going to go over most of my mods, as well as what kind of Let's Play I'll be looking to do for this. If you want to skip all this and just get to the very start of my Let's Play, you can go ahead and click the annotation that I'll add later on. So, um, I want to do something like a roleplay-ish Let's Play. I mean, I'll, you still might hear me talk like out of character sometime during the let's play maybe uh, a time where i'm just traveling in between places or i'm just doing like chores so i think the kind of character that i like to create would be an imperial who travels to skyrim for work and basically he either gets cut off from the job where everyone that he was working for is killed and now he's stuck in Skyrim with no feasible way back without crossing the border which I don't know the whole war going on and you know how the game originally starts you get caught for crossing the border illegally so I think I will go with the Imperial I'll be a male sorry guys if you don't want to watch a let's play where a guy plays as a woman And I usually have this preset. This preset's always my favorite for Imperials. So I like this guy. Skip right to the end. I want to change his beard though. I always gotta make sure his beard's perfect, or might as well not have one at all. Not a fan of mutton chops. I guess this will always have to do. So my name will be Guyton. This will be playing myself. All right. Would you like to choose another class and birth sign for this character? Yes. So now I'll go through all my mods. As a male imperial, my restoration skill increases 10% faster than usual, and my block, destruction, enchanting, heavy armor, and one-handed skills are 5% faster. Alright. And... As for my birth sign, you know, standing stone, I'll pick a lord. Lord is always my personal favorite. I get 50 armor rating bonus and 25% magic resistance. So I'll definitely choose that. And for my class, I won't pick an actual class. I'll make a custom class uh, based around being a hunter, survivalist, ranger type character. So mainly bows are my main weapon of choice. And then I can use a blade or another weapon, a one-handed weapon as my go-to for bashing in heads. So I'll go with stealth as my specialization. And I get a 5% increase and a 5 gain in alchemy, light armor, lockpicking, pickpocket, sneak, and speech. That goes well. And my class's favorite attributes, I'll give stamina. Because I'll explain later when I go through what mods I'm using. So for, as for combat skills, I'll pick archery. One-handed. Smithing will be useful too. And for stealth, I will get light armor, sneak. Oh, I have one skill remaining. I will go for alchemy. I can make stuff in the field. 
And there we go. There's my custom class already made. So now, let's go check out what mods I have. So, this doesn't reflect all the mods I have, but majority-wise, it's right here. So, this one is burn-free shock effects. This one just adds, like, if someone is killed by a frost attack or electricity or fire, it'll add, you know, the corpse will be on fire, it might be burned, the body will be frozen, and so on and so forth. Convenient horses is for, you know, better control of your horses you know you can do some cosmetic stuff as well dodge mod is pretty simple there's a key where you know i could do a little strafe move left or right dual wield parrying as it sounds if i have two weapons i can block with two weapons now so that was the one thing i never got with the vanilla dynavision is just field of view changer and the first big one we have is frostfall and Frostfall is basically, you can get sick, well you can't actually get sick, but you can die from being outside exposed too long. So right now I'll start up Frostfall, and I'll explain what it is. So basically, I could be outside, and it could be extremely cold, and if I can continue getting colder and colder, I can essentially die of hypothermia. So, and... Even if I'm not dying, I could have a reduction in stats. So if I'm freezing and I try to fight somebody, obviously because you're freezing, you'll have a harder time. You also have a couple benefits, like if you're very warm or comfortable, uh, you'll actually have some bonus regeneration going on, at least for being warm. So Frostfall is good. Just make sure. I also want to add wear, which means whatever clothes you're wearing, it depends on how warm you'll be. So if I'm wearing like full fur armor, I'd be extremely warm. If I'm wearing, you know, thick heavy armor, I could be cold because, you know, it's not for warmth, it's for protection. So I re-equip my clothes. And Hunterborn is a hunting mod. So I can essentially kill an animal, carry the whole body, Take it to, you know, in front of a town or something, butcher it, do everything right there rather than, you know, kill it. And the loot system is a bit more realistic, so you get more meat. And if you don't have something like a hunting knife, the pelt quality is going to be crappy. So I'll start Hunter Born. And there are my abilities. also enable monster hunter so I can hunt and get skins from trolls and you know I can have dragon meat and I'll make sure everything is compatible magic duel is essentially if you and an enemy spellcaster both use you know fire shock frost at the same time essentially you get into a duel and you'll have to like mash your mouse since I'm not going to be much of a magic user, I probably won't use this often. But, you know, you might witness a duel between a dragon and a spellcaster, or two spellcaster NPCs. Or I can just use this in another Let's Play if I ever do another Skyrim series, which is probable. Real Shelter is if you're under, you know, if you're ever playing Skyrim and you're under a balcony roof, and the rain is going through, this kind of fixes it, or at least to the point where it counts as you're under protection, so you're not getting wet. So this is great for Frostfall. Realistic needs and diseases is essentially food, water, sleep. If you don't do any of those three, you're going to start suffering from malnourishment, thirst, which can affect health regeneration, stamina regeneration, magic regeneration and being tired will affect your fighting and how much you can carry sands of time um i don't think i'm going to tweak this that much hmm. because i really don't know 
much of this mod yet. Essentially, it is... You can be in the wild and you're attacked. Like, let's say you've done Bleak Barrel Falls a thousand times. And then all of a sudden, you're attacked by an enemy you've never seen before. You've never seen this bandit. You know where all the bandits are, where all the treasures are. And then you're attacked by two or three people you've never seen before. That shouldn't even be there. That's Sands of Time. You could be even in an inn. And there's a small percent chance bandits will break into the inn and start attacking everybody. So this adds a bit more of, you can be attacked anywhere. It doesn't matter. So I'm not really going to touch on this too much maybe in between videos I'll, I'll do something where I actually go heavily into this to make sure everything's good but for now I'll leave it untouched and let's see sky UI it's pretty simple it's the user interface is completely changed everybody pretty much uses sky UI or you know iHUD if they'd rather that sky realism this is for capacity and carry weights this makes carry weights more realistic as well as how much you can carry very small if you saw I only have 52 carry weight so I can't go around carrying like 10 full sets of steel armor because I can't do that sneak tools it's stuff like I can slit throats from behind I can knock someone unconscious if I have like a, a hammer or a maul I could kill people in their sleep things like that. I can also kill essentials, so people you're not supposed to kill in the main game, I can do that. So, it's not a 100% chance, it's not like I'm bypassing the instant kill, you know, high stealth tree, because you can actually be interrupted mid knife slitting. Knife slitting, wow. But, you can be interrupted if they're much higher level than you. So, it's still not a 100% chance. If they're much higher level than you, you you can still be screwed over by it. Uh, Dance of Death. Kill moves. I want all my kills to be cinematic. Unless you guys are getting tired of it. I love seeing a bunch of cinematic kills. It's not all the time. It's not really 100%. But most of the time. And Wet and Cold is more uh, people. They're going to be putting on clothes to protect themselves. Etc. So... Yeah, I mean, that's that's mostly it. That's all my mods that I have in uh, mod configuration in game. So, let me quick save my game. And I'll go talk to the Statue of Mera. This is another mod. Approach, my child, and choose where your new life shall begin. This is Live Another Life. So, with this mod, I can essentially start out anywhere that it gives me in the list. So, I can come by ship from Skyrim. I could be a property holder, so I can already start with a house. I could be in a guild. I could just be in a bar. I could be a soldier with the red cloaks. The storm cloaks, or the imperials. Red cloaks. Wow. This is already going great. Oh, uh, I believe this one is the original, but I'm not sure. But for the sake of this, I was attacked and left for dead usually goes well with being started out randomly somewhere. The light of hope shines even for you. Don't give up. Okay. So, the difficulty I'll be playing on, one of the biggest changes is that this has Skyrim redone. So all the scaling, the levels of all the enemies, um, the AI, the combat, is all improved. And I will be playing on the Adept difficulty. Now, some of you think, oh, you know, I don't want to watch you play on Adept. Adept is, like, so easy. It's, like, for new players. But everything has been changed around, so even Adept is more difficult. I mean, Adept is, I do 100% damage that I always do, and the enemies do 100% damage. Because if I made it any harder, I'd be handicapping myself and then giving them damage multipliers. And if I did the other way, I'd be giving myself damage multipliers while handicapping them. I want no handicaps. I mean, if they're stronger than me, that's because they're stronger than me and not because I'm making myself weaker. So this will be a very hardcore, gritty, realistic kind of thing. So, let's go sleep to the bed.
Where in the world am I? All the way in the north. I shouldn't be here, not like this. It looks like my best bet is to head over to Winterhold because that's that's the closest place I can find. And there is an army of wolves out here. I have to be careful. Because I'm unarmed. Looks like storm cloaks. Oh, is that an ice wraith? It's freezing out here. I wonder what's that? A big statue. this corpse get here his armor certainly doesn't look warm but I will take that hatchet Must be the one that killed him. That's what you get. Some food. Oh, he has a longbow. Definitely use that. This boots, though, I will definitely need to keep myself warm. Definitely need to also check out this camp. I kill you too? Locked. Oh no. This good's too heavy for me to carry. I have to do my best to make it. I used to hear such good things about this place in Skyrim. I can see why it's going to hell. It's too cold out here, I have to get inside. I'm sorry, could you describe the smell? Like some horrible monster was turned inside out and then exploded. What did you do? It was a minor miscalculation. The mages don't let us I go in the college. They said it's not safe in there. This. This is why people hmm. have a problem with your college, Nelikar. 
I don't know anything about the mages here. Says his pa says that college makes lots of bad things happen, but the mages have seen look nice. There's not many people left in Winterhold, so I only have Aster to play with, and sometimes he's mean. I guess you don't Aster get much people to talk to. Play hunt the elf, and he makes me be the elf. See how much gold did I have on me? Sixteen. If there's anything, you, if you're business with the college, you're welcome to stay here. It's where most of our business comes from, in fact. I like run through, sure please. Thing. It's yours for a day. And I'd also like some water. Make that another one. I'll show you to your room. Right this way. Let me know if there's anything else you need. Thank you, my good man. It's quite a perilous day. But was able to survive bandit attack and the cold. I think I'll take a nap now. Well met, traveler. I am Kaidojo, a monk making the pilgrimage to the shrine of Azura. Shrine of Azura? It's not every day I meet a Daedric monk. Then today will be no different than any other. For while I recognize Azura's place in the pantheon of the divines, the Daedra hold no particular favor in the doctrine I follow. Some may see the line between Aedra and Daedra as a means of separation, when the divide itself is the true nature of our existence. It is in the eye of the storm that one finds balance, and with balance comes the flourishing of life. Explain this doctrine of yours. I follow the path of balance through opposition. The Aedra and Daedra are the embodiment of this mantra. It is a common misconception that these balancing forces are the spirit of good and evil, a reductive and flawed interpretation. The Aedra are the agents of stasis and order. The Daedra are the essence of change and chaos, for chaos itself cannot be an agent of anything. When the two are in balance, time progresses at its natural flow. The world changes as it stays the same. Although in truth, it is not for us to attach labels to the creators. If mortals cannot divine the nature of themselves, it is quite presumptuous to try the same with the gods. Well, it was enjoyable talking to you. Perhaps I'll speak with you later. May you be safe wherever you go. So it looks like I'll spend some time here with all the people. If you've enjoyed this Let's Play so far, as short as the first episode has been, and what you'd be interested in seeing as far as this Let's Play goes, leave a comment. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.